think too in the hot climates convertible is always a little bit cooler and uh, if you got someone beside you you can say hey babe you know drive a Mustang convertible I think it might be a little bit more cooler <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Six Gear channel. And in today's review, I'm going to be reviewing another Mustang and it's so beautiful outside. I brought the convertible because we just got one in. It's a 2021 Mustang GT Premium, of course, with the five liter, but no manual. We have the automatic, unfortunately, but with the uh, Showstopper red interior, looks amazing, drives amazing. Let's hop into the review. All right, guys, so here's the 2021 Mustang GT in shadow black with actually some black accents around the vehicle so it looks really really good um so there's really pretty much no chrome on it and it just looks so so good and of course it's the convertible so it looks even better but again we have that front beautiful mustang gt look um looks just really menacing at the front we get the two hood vents at the top too so it looks really really good i actually don't mind the convertible top myself so Looks good, but we'll hop on into the grill here. We have that beautiful Mustang badge in black, of course, because we have the black appearance pack on it. And standard Mustang look to it. Looks really good. I don't mind the convertible top as well when it's down, so it looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, let's um, let's take a look inside the, the motor itself. So equipped with this Mustang, we have, of course, the Coyote 5 liter V8 producing 460 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque hooked up to a 10-speed automatic transmission. So really, really good. The shifts are pretty smooth. I actually don't mind it myself. Um, the paddle shifters feel pretty good. Um, personally, I prefer the six-speed manual, but if someone just kind of want to drive this daily and not want to drive manual, it's a really good option. So that obviously is what the Mustang GT Premium is equipped with. So that's pretty much it for the front. Let's take a look around the vehicle. So again, this does have the black accent package. It's like a, a black appearance pack. It looks really, really good, especially with the uh, convertible itself. I just cleaned it. And of course, when I drove it to a nice little area here at the park, it got a little dirty. So I apologize for that. But anyways, right down below here, we have some actually nice five spoke black rims. And they're sitting on the Pirelli P0 tires in themselves. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Pirellis. I rather prefer the Michelins like in the previous uh, Mustang year. But they're sitting on 25540 R19s for the tire up front here. So again, that's with the Pirelli P0 tires. Over here, we have the 5 liter badge actually blacked out because we have the black appearance pack. So it looks pretty good. So coming along the back here, we do have that beefed out back rear end. So because it fits the bigger tire in the rear. There's a look at the back tire with the rim itself. Again, we have 25540R19s on this. This does not have the GT Performance pack, uh, Package on it, so we don't have staggered tires. So hypothetically, you can do a tire swap if need be. So that's what it looks like on the side. Let's take a look at the back here. Coming along the back here, we actually have, again, a blacked out GT badge right in the center here. Um, we do have sequential tail lights, so when you turn, they will, well, when you put the turn signal on, obviously it goes one, two, three, and it just kind of does that for both, which it looks pretty good. We do have dual exhaust on both sides, your reverse light in the back. And again, I actually don't mind, like I, I like the black accents. It looks pretty good, especially with that showstopper red interior. Um, it kind of does a nice contrast when it comes to the lights in the back. So we do also have that rear camera housed right above or right below the tail light itself. So we do also have your four parking sensors back here. So we have two on each side on the driver side and then two also on the passenger side as well. Let's take a look inside the trunk. To access the trunk, there's a button right under here, the license plate cover. Put that up and there's the trunk access. So we do have some stuff here because it is a brand new vehicle. So the techs will have to put that on <clears throat> when the car gets delivered. But nonetheless, we do have a decent amount of storage. Um, this is with the top down. So you actually don't have any compromise in the trunk space itself when the, when the top is down. So tons of trunk space and looks pretty good. 
Uh, when you do put the seats down, you actually do get a little bit more room. So maybe if you want to put a set of golf clubs or something like that, maybe just one set you might be able to get in here. But other than that, it's not too, too big. The point of entry is not too bad, but when it comes to putting big objects in there, you might just be able to fit one set of clubs. So let's shut it, take a look what it looks like again. And again, I love the top down on this. Um, personally, I prefer a hard top convertible, um, but with the rag top on this, actually doesn't look too, too bad. But um, I do have it with the top down, so of course it's a convertible, it looks pretty good. Um, I'll show you what it looks like with the top up, actually, to see what that feels like. So here is what it looks like with the top up. Um, I actually don't mind the look of it itself, but again, I prefer a hard top convertible when it comes to convertibles. And I mean, the black, the hard top or the soft top actually doesn't look too, too bad, especially when you come to the side here. I think it looks pretty good, but again, I prefer the hard top when it comes to convertibles. But actually, don't, and the black too, the shadow black looks pretty good with the overall look of the whole car with the whole black um, package on it. So the accent package looks pretty good. So. That's, it, that's what it looks like with the top up. And of course, the exhaust sounds amazing on these Mustang GTs. Let's take a listen. All right, so let's take a look actually inside the interior of the Mustang GT. We do have a, a, a keyless entry. So with these four knobs or these lines here, you just hold that to lock and then a touch sensor is right behind here to unlock it and you just be, are able to enter the vehicle just like that. So again, this does have the show um, showstopper red interior, which I think looks absolutely amazing, especially with this black accent package. So again, we have some red trim carried throughout on the door panel, soft touch material all along the top and all along here where your elbow and arm sits. Your window controls here. We do have some memory seating as well. We do have Mustang right on the door sill itself, right down below. Nice little touch there. And we'll take a look at the back seats. But when it comes to comfort, it's not too, too good, um, especially if you're an adult. So if you can see there, there's not too much room in the back, but the seats look pretty good. And if you maybe have some kids or if you want to put anything back there, maybe like a suitcase or another set of golf clubs maybe back there, it's a good spot for that. So push that forward. And then let's take a look actually on the inside cockpit of the Mustang GT itself. All right, so hopping into the Mustang GT, we're greeted with the 401A package, which actually gives you the full digital display here. Personally, I like the analog a little bit better. It just looks a little bit more classic Mustang look and classic muscle car, but the digital display is really, really cool. Um, over here, we have your light controls. So here's your fog lights, your dimming of the interior lights, and then they're on auto right now. So window stocks over here. Um, we do have your lane keeping assist system. So push that and your lane keeping assist will change over here on the right. So there you go. But again, going back to the display here, very configurable. Using these controls on the steering wheel on the right, you can control um, different menus of the infotainment itself. So you can kind of go through and maybe change different settings. So right here, there's a Mustang logo. When you click that, you have a, a My Mode, um, which you can change different, um, like steering into normal or sport all the time. And that kind of thing. You have track apps, gauges. Um, you can show different gauges here if you want which is pretty cool. Uh, but again, that's with the Mustang logo down here when you click that. When you hit music, it goes into your music. When you hit nav, it goes into your navigation. Um, so pretty configurable. You're just gonna have to kind of play around with it. It shows your G-forces, that kind of thing, which is not too, not too shabby. But again, very configurable. You're just gonna have to go into different settings that maybe suit you the best. So that is how you do that there. Um, we have voice command here. We have your controls here to obviously co control the front infotainment. Then we have a, a cruise control. We do have adaptive cruise with this vehicle, which is pretty cool. Your volume settings and your tune settings. Um, one cool thing is you do have toggles down below over here. And then when you toggle through different settings, so if I go to different modes, if I go to sport mode, it will go into different um, gauges on the digital display there, which is pretty cool. Um, I just leave it on normal. I think normal looks pretty good. So that is how you change it. We do have paddle shifters. So we do have one here, one here. They are plastic. So I don't feel like the quality is the greatest when it comes to it, like the excitement. Uh, but again, they work pretty good. The shifting 
is pretty nice too, so I'm not gonna complain. We do have your window stock over here on the right, of course, and the steering wheel itself is wrapped in leather, so I think it looks pretty good, feels pretty good. So that's pretty much it for the driver center um, area. Let's take a look around the dash. The dash here is off is um, <laughs> soft touch material. It's got some red stitching up here with the Showstop red interior, so nice soft touch up here. We do have actually a Bang & Olufsen system in this vehicle, which is pretty cool. Um, your vent controls are here. No gauges are here like you do get in like a manual. And then we do have that soft touch material and that red stitching carry throughout on the passenger side. We do have a nice trim here that kind of carries throughout the whole interior. So it just kind of goes through the whole dash. We Down below we have your um, glove box. It's pretty much it for the interior itself. Let's take a look actually at the infotainment here. So this is the upgraded version of SYNC 3. So it's actually SYNC 3.4. Um, pretty configurable. It's pretty much the same as SYNC 3, um, just a little bit of an update. So with the house function up here, you can go home. Um, it does have a heat steering wheel, which is pretty nice, especially here in Canada. Right now, I think it's, well, it says 4 degrees, so that's pretty cool, um, especially right now in March, uh, and we've been having some terrible weather lately. So nice to have a little bit of warm weather in the sun out. Uh, we do have audio control, uh, your climate, your phone, your nav. So these are your hotkeys down below. It's pretty easy to use. I'm just going to have some trial and error. If you're familiar with the previous four generation uh, Sinks 3s, then it's pretty much the same thing, just a little bit of an update. So um, you have those controls there. We do have your controls actually to control your, your infotainment as well, your toggles, so your volume and your tune. Down below, we do have your climate controls. So it does have heated and cooled seating, which is pretty cool. Your rear defrost, that kind of thing here. So it is dual zone climate as well, which is nice. Down below, we have obviously your push button start. Your hazards are here. This is your traction control. So I'll move here on the other side so you can see. Trash control, this is your steering um, selection mode. And then here is your driver mode, okay? And they actually feel really good. I like that how Mustang One Ford put these nice silver aluminum tips here down on the bottom so it looks pretty good we do have a, st a spot down here to maybe house a key it does have apple carplay and android auto so we do have your usb connection there a 12 volt is put on the other side and again we just have that uh, spot right down below funny enough they actually put something here to sync so just to let you know that this does have the sync system which is pretty interesting it does have the 10 speed automatic transmission i wish it did have the six speed manual because i love it myself but that is what this car is equipped with, unfortunately. That stitching carries throughout, obviously, in the center here, as you can see. We do have some soft touch material over here, which is nice to put your knee. But the center is just pretty nice, and um, it is a soft touch material. We do also get that manual handbrake, which is nice to have, of course. And two cup holders here with some ambient lighting at night. Uh, a small center console as well which we'll take a look right now. So again, not too deep. I mean, you're not gonna buy a Mustang because you want a deep center console, but that is what this is equipped with. We have that 12 volt here, and we have a USB spot down below. So pretty nice. And then it comes with that red stitching as well. So we have the red stitching carried throughout. So it's pretty much it for the interior of the Mustang GT convertible. I think it looks really good. Again, I've reviewed the Showstop red interior before, and I thought it looked good on the coupe, and I think it looks great on the convertible, especially with the black accent package. I think it does a really nice contrast with a little bit of the red on the exterior. But again, it's just gonna come down to your taste. Some people might not like the red so much, but I think it looks really, really good. And it's pretty much it, again, for the interior. Um, let's take a look actually at the price. So let's talk price on this bad boy. So this price here is $63,090 Canadian, and I'll show you some of the options here. So it does have the 401A package. Uh, we can see it, it does have the adaptive cruise control, which is pretty cool, the navigation. Some added charges, we do have that 10-speed automatic transmission, the black accent package, and the single CD and HD radio, the charge in a thousand bucks with the upgraded Bang & Olufsen's 12-speaker surround system. So looks pretty good. Um, price itself, it's just going to come down to whether you think you see the value in that price. But um, I'll give you my final final thoughts on the exterior and let's take it out for a rip. Let's take this puppy out for a rip, shall we? All right, am I going to make this? Am I going to make it? Yeah, I'm going to make it. All righty. 
driving the Mustang GT. Kind of feel like Doug DeMuro a little bit. But let's see how this thing feels. I'm not driving any Bugattis or anything like that. I'm driving a Mustang GT. So let's see how this thing drives. It does have a nice sound to it, I'm not going to lie. I think Mustang, when it comes to the, the muscle car segment, I think the Mustang maybe sounds just a little bit better than when it comes to the driving sound a little bit of it. Ooh, nice E63S right beside me. Nice. Um, but yeah, I think it sounds really good. It's driving really good. I'm probably going to take it out on the highway just to kind of see how she, how she drives. But yeah, it's got a lot of peppiness. Uh, it's comfortable, like, you know, on a nice summer day in Canada because we don't get those often. And the benefit too, especially with this package, is you do have a heated steering wheel. So just in case if it does get maybe a little bit cold outside, you do have that ability to heat your steering wheel. And again, here in Canada, it's always beneficial to have a heated steering wheel and remote start because it's sometimes freaking negative 20 outside and you get outside and your f hands are freezing. So obviously really nice to have that heated steering wheel. I do like the steering wheel feel and it's touch like it look it feels really good it's not too thin it's not too thick i think it looks really in it good and it feels really nice so overall interior quality i think the quality is a little bit better than some of its competitors i haven't driven a challenger at all but the camaro i love the camaro interior like the whole design element i just wish they maybe added a little bit of more better leather elements to it because there is a lot of plastic so that is one complaint I have with the Camaro but um, the Mustang itself one thing I do wish they did have is that kind of mesh up here so it helps get rid of that wind noise when you are driving it because one complaint with convertibles is you do get a lot of wind noise um, again I do have the windows up but if I had them down there might be just a little bit more noise that people might be frustrated with so uh, I am about 5'11 so my head is actually not too high from the ceiling, so if I had my top up, I would be totally fine. I would still have my headroom up here, and I wouldn't be complaining. So that is one good thing. If you are maybe even over six foot, just over, I think you'd be okay too, but um, that's one benefit to, with the, the Mustang, of course. But no, no complaints so far. Yeah, again, I really like it. I'm going to use the paddles. I'm going to put it in sport mode because I was in drive. So I'm in fifth gear. The shifting uh, transitions are actually pretty smooth. I'm not going to lie. I thought they wouldn't be as good, but I actually don't mind them myself. Like right now, just shifted to fourth, now third. Uh, let me see. It doesn't have the active valve exhaust, so I can't really change that. But let's see here. I'm just peeling on. In Kitchener, uh, in Ontario, they love their roundabouts, so... I think a convertible in the hot climates, it's just going to be a little bit more fun, I think, because the top's down, you know, you might be with someone, just say, hey, babe, you know, I got a Mustang convertible. So, yeah, I'm pretty impressed, to be honest. This is something I would truly drive. It's not something I would buy, because it's not my spec, but I think it's a really interesting spec. I like it myself. Someone's definitely going to want to buy this, especially when it comes to springtime, because here up in Canada, when it, when spring hits, it just, everyone wants to buy a car. And now with COVID, people got so much money probably just saving, and they might want to buy a toy. So it's definitely a really nice thing to have. The seat shaking. But, yeah, I love it. Love this car. No complaints at all. Pretty happy with it.